What's up, everyone? Welcome to the We Out Here I mean, Not Podcast Show, but <laughs> podcast. Guys, hey, we viewers are viewers at home. Were we listening to music or not? You be the judge. <laughs> Decide if Alex, in fact, did edit the music or he didn't put it in, so we look like idiots. Uh, I think guys, I prefer that. <laughs> that were we just like silently it. dancing. Guys, welcome to the We Out Here at Maybe Not Podcast, but Show Me Not Podcast. Uh, as you can see, my husband is here, Nick the Ear. Round of applause. Woo! Our other husband, unfortunately, is not here. We had a scheduling issue because he, my boy, making money. He's trying to buy that house, that car, the diamond rings, a basketball hoop. So uh, he's <laughs> working, but we will hear from him later because I believe he is in Vegas right now and uh, on satellite. We'll, we'll chat with Alex in a bit. But uh, we are here. It's a big fight week. It is UFC 270 what, Nick? 276. Good. I almost said four. 276. Uh, so we're going to get into that card, uh, which I it might be the biggest card of the year, I think. It could be potentially a lot of uh, MMA world-altering. Uh, mm -hmm. th things can happen. A lot can shift yeah. from this one card. Uh, we're gonna do a really quick recap of uh the Sarukin fight, Nick's favorite fighter. Um, and also touch on some news uh news headlines. But uh first of all, uh Nick, you said you watched the fights. I don't think you I did, did watch the fights. I did I'll watch you, the fights. I'll tell you why I didn't watch the fights because I was on why stage. Why did you not watch before let me the tell first, you, Gil, what you were glorious on stage? I'll be but honest. What are we talking about? I'm, Tell the audience. We're talking about the Tiger Belly live show bra, that bra. Gilbert pretty much hosted. Him and uh, Pink Dick George. Um, but you know what? I, I do love watching you on stage, Gil. You have a presence about you. You're a natural up there. You have command of the crowd. Stop it. Uh, and it's just cool to watch your friends do cool shit. And uh, it is true. It was dope. It was really cool. You've was, actually seen me a couple fired times. Up. Thanks, man. I feel like you've already uh, you've actually watched me perform. I feel like two, three a Filipino two. half show, a Filipino show. Uh, yeah, with you Albert. Saw, you saw me perform Alfred at a, Zazazaz. You saw me perform at a Filipino halftime show, whatever that half is, show. which is yeah. basically just a Jabawaki concert. Um, yeah, it was a fun show. Uh, Nick is obviously alluding to the Tiger Belly live show. It was a game show. It was fun. It was a uh, what sixteen hundred people packed house. Adrenaline was Dude. through the roof. It was crazy to see how many people were there. I was walking around and I was like, holy shit. A lot of people. Tiger Belly has listeners. There's a, a lot, lot of listeners. people love Tiger Belly. And guess what? Most of them are crossovers. We out here MMA. So shout out to you guys listening right now. All seven of you. But you know what's crazy? There was a very diverse crowd in the Tiger Belly. Actually, uh, I was area. I didn't get to actually see. I made a joke, obviously, at the beginning of the show that it was all Mexican, but I really couldn't see because it, it was dark. Yeah. What did you actually see in terms of demographic? It was a lot of Mac it was a lot of Browns. A lot of the yellows. Whites. What about the whites? Not really. Yeah, some white sprinkled in there. Some white sprinkled in there. Um, not a lot of black people there, which was a little disappointed. <laughs> as, so. as Bobby says every time, can we get more black listeners? But yeah. you know what? You guys we don't have not a lot of black listeners. We need more black listeners, guys. You guys need. You guys need to get like other black comedians. Maybe. Maybe that'll help some crossover. Donald Rawlings was on there, and that's a big guy. What about a Charlemagne? I'm I'm a big fan of the Charlemagne. The yeah, Charlemagne and Bobby. Does that connect? I think I think it would hit off. I think Bobby can connect with anybody, and I think you guys would do well. You guys, because that fool, they talk deep shit all the time, and I feel like you know, it'd be good. Talk, guys, just talk to my people. I'll put you guys in contact. If that's you guys great, want. Jeez. Uh, guys. This is now a, a podcast recap show. Or <laughs> other podcasts and try to do uh, fantasy pairings, and also. One more thing, I gotta give some flowers and roses to my boy Alex out there. So Alex I'm on stage, Costa. taking pictures of the whole event. He looked very happy in his, his element, element, doing his thing. So you know, hey, shout out to most, Alex for most taking great pics. Most importantly, about Alex, homeboy dyed his hair blonde. He dyed his hair blonde, blonde. before I even did. Alex, I, I couldn't even do it. Alex, put your photo up right here. Put your blonde yeah. photo up right here. Blonde. And you don't have to edit any other stuff into this podcast. Yeah. But right yeah. there, boom. There's there's Alex with his uh, Derek Brunson hair. He's going to beat someone up. And I like it because it's two-tone Alex. And I think two-tone Alex is the coolest Alex. Two-tone Alex. So this whole time he's been one-tone, you've just been hating him? That's messed up. There's not like nothing really stands out about him. So I was like, oh, just Alex. But now I'm like, oh, it's two -tone. Alex. Two-tone. Yeah, yeah, two-tone Alex. I'm a fan. Uh, speaking of two-tone, what about losing a decision tone? 
guys, here's a re- fight recap, <laughs> no cap. Um, it's crazy how you did that. Yeah, it's it was, crazy it was, how you stretched Kind of crazy how dumb it, that was. And it also kind of makes sense, but hey, kind of makes I'm, sense. I'm not mad at it. Fight recap, no cap. Uh, we had a fight night uh, recently. I believe it was the UFC Apex. Uh, Yo, what did you think of the fight? What did you honest, think of the showdown? Didn't watch between... the fight. Your guy was on stage during the fights. But Nick, I still don't believe you actually watched the fights. So you got home at one o'clock. We went to the bar afterwards. And when did you actually yeah. even? So before, after the show, I was saving the fights, right? I was saving the fights. When I saw Alex on stage taking pics in my head, I was thinking, Alex is probably going to spoil the fights for me. That's what I said to myself. I don't know why I thought that, but I did. After the show, we're all sitting outside, standing around. I finally meet up with my beloved Alex Acosta. And he goes, hey, did you hear? Armin Saruki lost the fight. And I go, <laughs> fuck. I was saving it for home. I was going to watch it later. And Alex just dunked on me. And he said he lost by decision. So I go, all right, great. And every time I watch a fight with that lens and this new information, see them I'm a little way? biased. You see them as the result. I see it as a result. And I'm looking uh. for it. I'm looking for like, when did the, the, the fight start to turn? Mm-hmm. So maybe I'm biased and maybe I am biased because I am a big fan of Sarukian, but I'm a really big fan of Gamrot. I think he's fucking phenomenal. Who'd you I pick? think I picked Sarukian. Yeah, you did. But I thought it would be close and it was close. It was a really close fight. Was it a I split? I don't Sarukian think it was a split. Won. It wasn't a split, but I think the judges got wrong. Like I, I, uh, the, the fight was so close. It could have literally gone either way. It really mm-hmm. could have. But in my mind, I thought, Sarukin won three rounds. I at least won three rounds. I thought he landed the most damaging shots. I think he had the more dominant exchanges. You know, um, Gamrot did really good. Sarukin dropped Gamrot with a spinning back fist. Mm-hmm. Gil, you got to rewatch the fight because if there's a fight to rewatch, if you want to be a fan of wrestling, if you you think grappling is boring, you're like, man, this is whack. You watch this, this is the one fight. This, is the, this one, is the fight right? that'll turn people to be like, oh, this is how fun wrestling can be because it's just like there's so many exchanges. They were rallying back and forth. It, it was just you, the guys that were fighting in that cage that night, they could not take their foot off the gas. They were, they left everything in that octagon and it was, it was fucking a phenomenal fight. I, it, it was one of the best fights of the year. Um, so where do you Skilled see fights. where do you see Gamrot then? Because that like look, you had Armin yeah. being really high up there in terms of like a yeah. grappling. Granted, like you still think Armin won, but yeah, yeah, you said you're a fan of Gamrot, so he's still got a big name in terms of like the two. Oh, you're saying man. like the two guys that probably should will probably fight later on in their careers, but Gamrot yeah. got the better this time. So do you see him jumping what into like what what kind of names are you going to see him fighting? So like he is fight? he's at number eight right now. I think he was at fourteen. He's mm-hmm. at number eight. Um, Armin's still a number 11. So people are saying Benil Dariush, Benil Dariush and That's Gamron. Benil's already. at Ooh. six now. But dude, I think this is the new wave of lightweight fighters, lightweight, um, and just in general. Like, does, does Gamron beat anyone above him? Like, does he beat dude, an RDA? Does he beat Michael think, Chandler? I think Dustin? he is so skilled. He, he trains with Dustin, he trains at an American top team. Um, I think he beats Chandler. I think, I think he has a R- really good shot RDA? against those RDA. I think he he matches up really well with Justin Gaethje. That's what we called out next. I think he matches up really well with Charles Oliveira. I, uh, it, it's just this is the age of the complete fighter, mm-hmm. you know, and this is the new generation. Like this is a 21st century lightweight, and it's Gamera. And he's been good before he came to the UFC. When he was fighting KSW, he was like undefeated over there. He was smashing everybody. And then he fought a really good guy like Armin Sarukian. He's phenomenal. Armin Sarukian, I feel the same guys you could, he beats too. I think he matches up really well with the same guys. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's scary to see what the new age of lightweight is going to bring, but these guys are the future, man. And they're young. They're like 20. uh, I don't know how old uh, Gamron is, but Sarukian's like 24, 25. Gamrod is oh well, Gamrod's actually he's probably hitting his prime older. right now. He's 31. So he's hitting like Ooh. his prime prime. So this is good. This is good for him, actually. Really good. He's phenomenal, man. It, it was it was a it was a great fight. You got to rewatch it. I will the whole actually, fight, the whole fight card was great, actually. I think all the fight cards have been kind of 
great. So I'm not okay. surprised that you said the same thing about this one. Uh, we both, I think we all picked uh, Rockmanov. Shopcott. Oh, Shopcott. Did you pick, you picked Nilda, right? To upset. No, I picked, Sh- I picked Shopcott. Shopcott. Let's go. Shopcott. Saw the highlight he of lives that. up to the hype. He's the real deal. Is that his nickname? Oh. No. I'm I just it was Shopcott. He lives up to, he lives up to the hype. Rockmanov. <laughs> I, just, I don't even know what his, his, his fucking nickname is, but I honestly think this puts him in a higher stock than stay at Shemayev, dude. He Wait, potentially, what? what did you potentially say? Potentially puts him in a higher what stock. What did than, you say? Because look, Shemayev, this guy, crazy guy. You know what I mean? Like he wild boy, he wild card. You don't know what he's gonna when he's gonna do in the middle of a fight. Shavkat, he's a he's a cyborg in there, man. He's cool, calm, collected. Neil Magny did a really good job. Obviously, he was in bad spots the whole fight, but he did a really good job of keeping Shavkat away from, you know, mitigating some damage at least, right? But I think Shavkat is that good. He's he he's so good everywhere. He has beautiful striking, composed, really good wrestling, gr- good grappling awareness. Let, let me ask you something then, because that what? is interesting. I didn't realize looking at his record, like this guy is very versatile in his like wins. It's very like he got going Chinese fi- eyes, bro. Bro, Chinese eyes means triangle chokes for days. He got the and, same eyes as Zhang Wei Li and Song Yudong. So maybe have you seen any three of them in the same room? You haven't, dude. We you haven't. fucking have it. Are they the same person? Have it. We don't. Uh, who know. knows? Who knows? Also, that's a, that's on you guys. That's we wanted. We only brought that up because our last episode randomly got two thousand point two, uh, yeah, two thousand basically views, uh, and we think it's because of the title and that you guys are actually curious if in fact. Zhang and Song Yudong were the same person. That's racist as fuck. That's racist as fuck, viewers. That's on you guys. It was a test. I'm, I don't know how I feel about it, but I feel yeah. like we're going to end up on Next Shark or some shit, dude. Yeah, we're going to get canceled okay? for sure. For we're going to get canceled for this. Um, thanks, Alex. Yeah, yeah, thanks for making that the title. Uh, but yes, uh, man, what was I going to say? Not that threw me. Oh, Rachmanov and uh, Chimaev. So I was looking at his record very impressive like really especially beating neil magny very impressive really Shemayev, guys. obviously beat gilbert burns last fight very close fight but still be one of the best newer fighter i mean this is what i kind of talked about in terms of like it really depends on how you get promoted and what where you're at because like chamaya was already at the top he's already top five yeah, and, yeah but yeah. like you like pointing this out this win with neil and like looking at his record remembering all those fights and like yo this guy if he had like been put in the same position he could probably be up there with Chimaev. So I'm curious, what, could this guy beat Gilbert Burns? I think he matches up well. I, don't, I, I Can this guy beat, can, do you see a world where Chimaev and this guy are fighting in a yeah. year and a half? It, it's it's, it's going to happen, dude. It's, it's going to fucking happen. Um, How's Chimaev? This guy's 27. Wow, UFC is getting a lot, finally, a lot of fighters. But, but like, then again, too, Chimaev, he he got the hype. He got that on link of, good internet. he got that on ramp of the fighting back to back on Fight Island. Mm-hmm. That story really pushed his stock really fucking high. Mm-hmm. And they're already talking about Shavkat as far as like, dude, this guy's sick. He beat, he beat Cowboy Oliveira. Yeah. He beat Prezeris, Harris. who like, and he made it look easy. People don't make those fights look easy. You know, when they fight him, it's it's like a, it's a scrap you know so mm-hmm. he went out there and just dusted all of them and he he kind of had an effortless flawless victory over neil magny this one just took him about two rounds you know people might condemn him for that but neil magny's fucking <laughs> tough dude condemn him for going to two rounds with he, neil hey, magny. people are fucking hey you know you never know how people are but dude this fight card is i think it was great because it showed the new talent coming up you got umar Nurmagomedov, amazing he looked fucking great then you get a Tiago Moises comes back after fighting the two fucking beasts in the division, losing that comes back beat Christos Diagos in a really, you know, dominating fashion. And then you get a guy like Chris Curtis, who I think is a dark horse in yeah. middleweight. He's fucking beastie. He beat a tough guy in Rodolfo Rivera, you know, and he 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 looked pretty like unfazed by him, you know. So Chris Curtis, he's the real deal, and I think. He, this is just good for the divisions that they're all in. Bantamweight yeah. at Umar, you get another fucking killer. You know what I mean? So it's, it's, it's good times. It's good timing. A lot of good fighters on this. A lot of potential. Great fight You're probably looking at your top uh, five for the next couple of years and a lot of these fighters. on this Honestly. Card. Honestly. Like- Umar is going to probably get on ramp to fight soon. 
the frozen puck. I put it in the fridge overnight. And by the time I wake up in the morning, it takes me literally two minutes to make coffee. I throw mm-hmm. the, the, the melted Pod. cup puck. Yeah. I throw it in puck. some water, ice, a little bit of almond milk, the way like my lady likes it. And a little bit of sugar, if you like, or a simple syrup. And yep. dude, I like it's phenomenal. That. It's phenomenal. It's the best. Like, and it's so easy. It's you won't get regular, you won't get good tasting coffee like this in a regular, like in the top ten. Uh, I want to do a shout out uh, only because I I remember this guy was funny. I do like him, but he got some like you know some uh, internet bump from the UFC embedded with the uh, all the Oceana folks. Uh, Uberg had his whole Carlos. squad, his whole squad there. Think about that. All the cha- yeah. like, all the champs are just cheering for you. I feel bad for the other guy. He's like no yeah. one, and there's an entire CKB there. Just cheering them on. That's ridiculous. Um, but yeah, shout out to him He's and the, the team. Good win. It's a good start. He should be a, a, a male stripper. I don't know if you know. Is this. that fact? Why do you know that? That's Why one of the news that? stories. There's so it's it, there's so little MMA news. That's one of the stories. Carlos Oliver got his nickname for being a male stripper. That's you the headline. Okay. You looked that up. Obviously, I did. Obviously, cool. I looked it up, dude. Fine. Oh, guys, let's get to our we out here morning news. It's shorter. It's shorter than Way the real shorter. one. And it uh, sounds like it sounds better. It sounds more consistent, really. All right. Here's the headline, guys. Dana White wants no part of McGregor Mayweather rematch. Says Connor's next fight will be in the cage. Uh, is anyone asking? I mean, do you know any of the developments? Or can you tell me more about this of the McGregor Mayweather rematch? How's that even back again? Just like every fight negotiation that starts on Twitter, right? Connor it's, says, "Yeah, I'll accept the fight between him and Floyd Mayweather. Because, you know, it kind of makes sense. Mm-hmm. Floyd is, like, looking for exit. He's He must be broke because he's fighting all over Bro, the world. he fought his former, like, sparring partner. What is that even? Probably he, hasn't paid Logan, he hasn't paid Logan Paul yet. I watched That's the I flagrant two thing, and, like, I didn't realize that he really has not even paid him. That's wild. It's kind of fucked up. Super fucked up. So we'll see how that all plays out. But you know, him and Mayweather and McGregor makes sense, but it doesn't because it's probably one of those things where UFC has to co-promote. Dana ain't gonna let that go, you know. Um, but dude, nobody needs to see that. Connor needs to just stop fighting, period. No, he needs one more fight. Who it's not about who. I want a documentary called the Redemption Tour where he does the whole documentary where he talks about how this whole thing, he lost sight of who he was. I want him to like admit on camera at a serious documentary, like, yeah, I did the drugs. I did this. I went down mm-hmm. a path. I don't want to be there. This is my redemption tour. And he does like the old school, like go to Big Bear or wherever it is, and just or goes back to fucking, <laughs> uh, he trains like old school. None of this yeah. training on a beach in Ibiza. 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 With some paella. With pa- Can yeah, I tell what? you my hot take? What? Keep my it warm, though. My hot take is... No, it, this is going to be real spicy, and Good. Alex may not even like it. His ears might be burning once I say this, but Connor hasn't been the same since he stopped playing touch butt in the park with Ido Portal. So is that his saying, key to his victory? What you're saying is that is the key this, to his victory, bro? When did he stop working with Ido? What after, fight? After the Jose Chad? Aldo fight. Oh, after Jose Aldo. What was after Jose Aldo? That was Eddie Alvarez, right? He, and Ido wasn't there? Nate. There was Nate. Oh, and then there was none of this. Nate won, right? Nate won. And then he went. He was there with Mayweather, right? Because remember, he was still doing this. And people were. Nah, like, he what? wasn't there with Mayweather, but he was doing that in the ring. That little fucking little shoulder shimmy. Um, but look, all, all seriousness, Connor needs to go back to uh, his old style when he was at Featherweight. Mm. He can't adopt this boxing only style because he's just going to get dusted. He looks slow. He doesn't look athletic. He th- I think he bought into his own hype that his boxing is really good. In reality, it's like, yeah, he has good boxing, but ever since he started relying more on his boxing and stopped going and he stopped using his overall MMA complete game, he kind of looks like shit. But that's just my take on it. Uh, Who well, else agrees with me? No one. Comment down uh, below. No <laughs> one will comment on that. I want to just point out, you put this note here. I think this is interesting which is crazy, but like not because it makes sense, is that Gamera yeah. knocks out McGregor out of the top 10, which is like, oh, wow, Connor's finally out of the top 10. He's he's like number 12 or something. The fact that he's even ranked is still wild to me. 
But yeah. like, who's below but, him? Just name a couple of people below him. Let me pull it up. All below right. him is Dan Hooker, Brad Riddell. Brad Riddell, should, Brad Riddell should be higher than Conor McGregor, probably. I think so, too, because he has more wins at lightweight. But there's this new news coming out. Conor McGregor fires back at Jorge Masvidal. What as their feud escalates. What a loser you are. Because Masvidal saying, you're a fucking pussy. You don't want to fight me. You're avoiding. Yada, yada, yada. You're on cocaine. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> I think at this point in time, this is the only fight that makes sense. Jorge and Conor. I like that. They're they're in kind of similar stages in their career. So Except it's interesting that the UFC decided to really pay Jorge even like right before the Usman fight. I think he's making like really good, like top tier money, like top three. Yeah. Which even though his, I think I th- that it was the perfect trajectory of his career. Like it just right time, right place. And he took the bag and he fucking ran with it, dude. He fucking ran with it. Cause and I don't know if he's a top tier fighter at the moment. I don't division. think so either. And I don't think Connor is either. I don't think uh like they're dr- is, but, they're would draws. You say but they're draws, and that's what you want. They're draws you want, because you want your people, two draws to fight. Dude, look, the flying knee was fucking insane. Yeah. Right. Like that was one of the craziest things you could ever see. And because of that, I think well deserved that Jorge got his stardom a little bit. People want to shit on Ben Askren all they want, but hey, at the time, he wasn't knocked out by Jake Paul yet. Mm. As soon as the Jake Paul thing happened, everyone looked at Jorge like you're a fucking bum, dude. That's what that's what that's what the fucking populace says, you know? Yeah, it's like isn't that crazy how fickle people are? People forget real quick. Keep that in mind, guys. Keep that in your resentment box. Nick called all of you fickle. I'm fickle Keep- too, though. No, you're not. You said everyone. You see me on my you, picks. You said you were perfect. Oh, yeah. I don't know. I think he's gonna win, but I think this guy has a chance. And you guys called me fickle, so fuck you guys. Someone please auto tune that whole thing. Thank you. Uh, Prince Ozan. 2000, the 2022 SB Awards. Charles Oliveira, uh, Kayla Harrison, two other UFC champs nominated for best MMA fighter. Uh, who are the two other UFC champs? Do you know? Kamaru. Oh, is it Kamaru? Yeah, yeah. Is it Kamaru and, and Volk? Volk, really? Yeah, who's gonna be the best MMA fighter? Gil? Here's the thing what with the think? here's the thing with the ESPYS. Isn't it um fan voted most? What is it, like the percent? Like fifty percent fan voted? I don't know. It's not gonna be I Kayla. So. It's not gonna be Kayla. Unfortunately, no. she's awesome, but like she just does, it's just it's probably gonna be Charles, dude. Be- I think because of the coverage with the Justin Gaethje and like uh him being champion, dude, and missing dude. weight storyline. It was all over ESPN. So people, even if you don't yeah. watch MMA. You're probably gonna choose him because you're like, I've seen that guy. Yeah. And then yeah, like, yeah. who is the what? Like Volk. Unfortunately, I mean, honestly, in terms of merit, I would say either him or Car uh, uh, Uzman. Kamaru. Kamaru Uzman. Yeah. In terms yeah. of just merit, yeah. in terms of what they've done, but in terms of like recognition, it's probably Charles. Like, p- part of me wants to give it to Alex, bro. He's had some great fucking fights, and like, just consistent yeah. and like showing that he's the best. As far as like best fighter, like you yeah. know, Charles Oliveira, my I think pick the is Usman cut stuff. Still. My pick is still Usman. That's he's very dominant. He's on the yeah, he's on the rematch tour. What are you talking about, dude? What are you talking about? You can't you can't argue with either of these guys. Yeah, okay? you can go ahead. It's a show. You can't argue. But most people, but most I think most people are, are leaning towards uh, Oliveira just because the blonde hair, the blonde. And he, he's had long. All his fights have been very like exciting, so everyone's just like, "Yo, I gotta fucking see, I gotta fucking see this guy fight," mm-hmm. and his fights are insane. Yeah. Um. All right. Well, that was our we out here uh, MMA morning news. Uh, before we get to our quickly picks, uh, we have a new segment. It's called Fashal with Alex Lefkada Costa. Alex reporting live from Vegas. Uh, he's gonna give you a UFC two seventy six breakdown. Alex, take it away. What is up? Your boy is not in Vegas yet, actually. I am in still California. I just had to work. I go to Vegas tomorrow to film with the guy Gabe Green, who fights Ian Gary and is going to beat up Ian Gary this weekend. But I'm here to give you my quick pick picks because your boy was at work, not making any money because we were slow as fuck. But yeah. You know, she checked the hair out of shit, kind of looking good. Yeah, my sister did it for me. Turned out real good. 
think it looks dope, so I'm finna keep it for a while. Um, and then when Charles Oliveira fucking submits, you know, Islam and shit, you know, we finna be matching, you feel me? Um, yeah, also, uh, they were talking about the Tiger Belly shit. It was fun. Took a lot of cool pictures. Um, they used some of them, and yeah, so it was cool. Fun weekend. It was cool to see Gil doing his thing. Um, they did. It was a huge show. A lot of people, a lot of people there. Um, had a, I think I had like two people be like, oh, Alex, we out here, which was cool too. So we did have some we out there fans, and we appreciate you. And again, make sure you like, comment, subscribe. Last episode did like 2K. Don't know why, but we fucking appreciate it. And anybody that's sharing and all that type of stuff is good. But anyways, my picks. <sighs> so Izzy and Jared Cannonier. Um, I think it's a cool fight. Uh, I think Izzy actually probably is going to win this one. Um, because I think he's just going to keep his distance, um, and strike on the outside. Jared Cannonier, uh, is going to be shorter. I believe he's like 5'11". Uh, he is 5'11". Izzy's 6'4". Has like three and a half inch reach on him. Um, the interesting thing will be is, you know, Jared Cannonier has fought heavyweights before, right? He's strong. He's a really strong dude. So I wonder if Jerry Cannonier is going to take a wrestling approach to this. Um, in the sense of him just using, like, brute strength. You know what I'm saying? I don't think he's, like, the most decorated wrestler. But I think he might, if he can get a hold of Izzy, I think, you know, he might shock Izzy. Because this guy's strong. Like, he's he's been fought heavyweight light heavyweight and now middleweight so he's a strong dude but with that being said I don't know like that's just an if for Jared Cannon or Jared Cannon here to win but I do think Izzy will win this fight next fight Alexander Volkanovsky versus blessed Max Holloway you already know who I'm fucking rocking with bro Max Holloway won that second fight he should be the champ right now his a uh, fight against Calvin Cater and Yair should have been title defenses, which were amazing fights, so they would have been amazing title fights, right? And, you know, um, I just think, yeah, I think Max is going to win. I think Max has fought. Now, you know, when you look at um, the fight with Volk, right? It was the leg kicks, the speed the, for the first fight, okay? Um, he fought Yair, who was really using his kicks and everything like that. And but he did look good. Like he he did eat a lot of kicks, but he was able to start, you know, countering them using his takedowns and stuff off of that. His boxing obviously has improved and he's really good because I mean he beat the shit out of one of the best boxers in the division in Calvin Cater. And in the Yair fight we saw a lot of his wrestling, right? Like he used his wrestling, his grappling. Granted, you know, Yair's not known as a grappler wrestler like Volkanovsky when he first came onto the scene is, but I do think that his grappling's going to be there. I think that's the only reason why Volk won that last fight, even though Max got up, like, pretty quick. So, yeah, I think uh, Max is going to win this fight. Um, he was talking about doing a lot of strength and conditioning, and his conditioning is going to be on par so he can do a huge output. So um, this should be an amazing fight, and I do think Max is going to take this by decision. I will give Volk that Volk is tough, and I don't see Max putting him out. I do think he wins by a decision, though. Next fight. Sean Strickland, Alex Pereira. I think, man, this one's hard. This one was hard for me only because I think Sean Strickland is going to shoot. I, I think he's going to. I think he can talk all this stuff right now in the sense of not talk stuff, but I think he can say, you know, he wants to stand and bang. You know, he's crazy, right? He does all this stuff, but... I just feel like Pieta is different, um, and we've seen it, right? When he lands, you can't just stand and bang with him. When he lands, he's going to knock you out. So um, I just think he's going to shoot. If I, I, I think Pieta is going to be able to keep it up, um, and I think Pieta is going to win this fight by like a TKO, probably second round. Um, but Sean, I think Sean Strickland's going to make it a hard fight for Piera because I do think he's going to go shooting. So, But I do have Piera winning uh, TKO. Think around second round. Next fight. 
Pedro Munoz versus Sean O'Malley. I think we kind of know what they're doing for Sean O'Malley now. They're trying to build him up. Um, I I said that this was the this was the next fight that he should do. It was either Pedro or Mar- Mar- Marlon Moraes if they wanted him to keep winning. Just because you know Pedro Munoz is going to be a lot shorter than him. Um, so Sean O'Malley's really good with his with his distance, with his speed, especially because it is a three round fight. If this was a five round fight, who knows? You know we haven't seen seen O'Malley do that, but. Um, I think O'Malley's gonna win this fight, uh, and by just a decision, just picking you know Pedro apart, Pedro apart for the three rounds. I do think though that if Pedro were to win, I don't think it's going to, but I think his his plan should be Pedro has really good low kicks. I think if he can implement those those low kicks and really pressure Sean O'Malley and make him uncomfortable because. Pedros is a dog, and he's been hit by the hardest hitters in this division, and he just keeps coming forward. I do think that at some point, if he can do that with Sean O'Malley, I think he might be able to mentally get past a barrier with O'Malley and make it a way different fight if he were to do that. I, but I do think Sean O'Malley is going to stay, pick him apart, his timing's going to be good, even though his timing for going out to podcast isn't good. His timing in fighting is good, and I think he's going to use that, and he will win a decision against Munoz. Last fight. This shit just got moved to here. Robbie Lawler, Brian Barberina. It's like, cool, all right. Don't really care that much, though. Like, I think, uh, fuck. Robbie did look good against Nick, bro. Like he looked like a monster. So I, I'll get I'll give Robbie the win. I think he's gonna win. Couple fights that I want to shout out. Prelims. Obviously, my boy Gabe Green is gonna fight Ian Gary. I think the fight that we saw Ian Gary do last is saw that when that pressure gets put onto him, um, he his whole cocky like long I'm the next Conor McGregor stick kind of goes away, right? And that pressure happened on him, and he kind of was almost survival mode, I felt like, for that fight. And won, and, you know, it was a really close fight, you know. I, I think I remember at the time I thought the other guy won. Um, but, you know, the thing with Gabe is we saw in Gabe's last fight, uh, his pressure is different, right? And he doesn't just walk forward like the other guy does. His pressure comes with strikes. It doesn't just come with pressure. So I think... Uh, you know, having seen Gabe train as well, too, and seeing his fights, I think his pressure with his strikes and power um, is going to eventually win him this fight. Um, I do think Ian Gary's best chance of winning is going to be in that first round because he does have a good right hand, right? He is good. He's good striking. He's going to be fast. He's going to be cocky. He's going to, you know, have his swag in that first round. But I think once Gabe goes in there and applies that pressure and says, hey, look, and shows that, like, hey, look, you're not going to knock me out. I think the story's going to change. Fight's going to change. And I think Gabe's going to take over um, and win. And honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if I see my boy Gabe sub- submit him in the second round. I think he'll get him up against the cage eventually, take him down, and submit him. Um, there's a couple other good fights. Uriah Hall, Andre Muniz, Munez. That's a really good fight. Munez, I believe, should take that. Um, and then you have Jim Miller, Cowboy Cerrone. I hope Cowboy can get it. Jim Miller is a harder fight than um, Joe Lozon, I believe, because Jim Miller has been winning and fighting good people and winning. Um, but, man, I hope uh, Cowboy can get it done. Uh, but, yeah, those are my quick, quick picks. Uh, keep a lookout. My boy Gabe is fighting this weekend. I will be out there in Vegas with him filming content and hoping for a successful weekend. Shout out to the boys doing the show. Um, Thank you, everybody, for the love. Make sure you come in and like and subscribe and comment. But let's get back to the boys. We out. And we're back. That was not pre-recorded. That was live. That actually happened. Um, He's in Vegas. Yeah, he's in Vegas. He wasn't recording at his house. You could tell he's sweating. He's sweating, for sure. And it's not like he used the green screen. We'll see if he does that. Uh, but uh, we are going to our quick pick picks uh, for our quick pick picks. Uh, we do have a special guest. Um, and that special guest is security officer. Is a security John officer. Rico. I, don't, 
I don't know if you've met him before, but I'd like to make a, a warm welcome uh, to our guests for the Quick Pick Picks with Alex Lefkatakosa, with Nick the Ear, and John Mayhem Rico. Give it up. Alhamdulillah, brothers. <laughs> Alhamdulillah, brother. Why? God give me everything. Can't I see your face? I don't yeah, want to see you. I don't want to see your camp. Okay, I don't see your camping on, trips. I don't care about your camping I, trips, dude. I don't know how Zoom works. Let's go. go. Yeah, what a beautiful backdrop. Alhamdulillah. Brother. Thank you. This um, is got, uh, this is my grandparents' spare bedroom. I was I love having it. some dinner with my grandparents. Oh wow, where oh, yeah. where are you at? Are you in California or a different state? I'm in Pasadena, motherfucker. Ooh, yeah, that's a, that's a different state, motherfucker. Can we cuss uh, on here? No. Yeah, dog. You can't. This is I'll, you I'll show me your I'll, you can I'll show me your dick to too. Oh god. Yeah. Are we doing that? <laughs> well, uh, uh, that's a like, little aggressive. John, can you turn your Welcome camera over, uh or, can you turn it the other way so we can see your full landscape yes. once you get a good Oh, yours doesn't How's turn. That? Yours doesn't turn. That's weird. Never mind. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Hold on, hold on. I I'm not a technical <laughs> Yo, you're I'm literally the age of a person that should that? not be saying that. There we go. Yeah, yeah, there it is. It's beautiful. All right. Great, uh, great, great. How are you John, guys? We're doing great. Uh, <laughs> Nick, do you want to do a little, uh, d- describe John a little bit, tell the audience who he is, what he's all about, and, you know, his whole vibe situation. John oh. is a security expert. This man does the top, top of the line security for the biggest names in media in hollywood entertainment in music this guy is the man okay and he's not only not only is he more flight top flight he's well versed in combat sports this guy understands how to throw hands yo this guy was played really quick at your house for one of the fight nights this guy was play fighting with me legit got scared for my life when he did a fake check and then did a teep kick in the kitchen Scared for my life. So this guy knows. I learned it all from Nick. I learned it all from Nick. <laughs> nope. The, the, nope. Not true. That's not true. I don't know. John, stop lying. You're better than him. All right. Uh, we're going to do a <laughs> quick pick. John, we're going to do some quick picks of this UFC's fight card. Uh, just pick the fighter you think is going to win and make a little bit of take on why you think um, they got it in the bag. So we'll start with the main event, gentlemen. This is Israel Adesanya versus Jared Crystal. Adesanya. Kananir. Uh, is he on a, a streak at middleweight? Jared, I believe, is on a Nick. Is it a fight, a one or two fight win streak right now? I think two, two. So two he's coming fight. back from Please. that loss back in the day. Uh, so we'll start with you, Nick. You started first, Israel Adesanya, Jared Cannonier. I think I know who you got, but okay. who you got? You guess who I got, and I'll I think tell you, you if you're right or not. I think you got Izzy on this one. I got Izzy on this. Oh my god, okay. because look. But but like like it, I don't think I think everyone thinks that Izzy's gonna walk through Jared Cannonier. I yes. don't think it's gonna be that easy of, of a fight. I feel like Jared Cannonier presents a lot of issues as far as his frame. He's a big dude. He's a big heavy hitter. It's just a matter if he could consistently cause chaos in this fight and mm-hmm. like and and make Izzy sweat a little bit if he could be a threat. You know, and it's a matter of because Izzy's so good everywhere, man. He could fight Southpaw. He could fight every and he stands. He's so good at making fights boring because you're just worried to engage with him. Everyone is like standing in front of him and they're trying to freak. They're kind of freaking out at what he potentially could throw. And anything he could, th- he, anything he could throw is fight ending. Mm-hmm. You know, like he could really he's, he's a sniper. He's in the truest form. So, yeah. I do think Izzy has the upper hand. Um, I think it's going to be an entertaining fight, and I feel like uh, Izzy's going to open up in this fight. So I think uh, I got Izzy. Nick got Izzy. with Izzy. Uh, John, uh, I would love to get your pick, but also uh, I'm curious if if there is a way for uh, Jared Cannonier to win. I wonder if you have any thoughts on that, if he could pull it off, because he's obviously is the underdog in this. Uh, who do you have winning, and could Jared well- pull it off? I've got Adesanya winning it, but I definitely think that Jared Cannonier's got a puncher's chance because he's got a fucking cannon in that right hand. Man. For real. And I think if he's gonna if he's gonna pull it off, he's gonna be in a wild scramble. I was actually just watching uh, Adesanya versus Whitaker one, and I think the advantage that 
Cannoneer would have in that is in those exchanges where Rob was just a little too short to mm. touch Izzy. I think one clean shot could put Adesanya down, but I don't see that happening. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think I think Izzy just has too many weapons, man. And yeah. that distance, that that reach is so hard to deal with. And Jared's not really a volume guy. Mm-mm. You know, he's a he's more of a sit back, one, two, you know, combinations. I just I don't see him pulling this one off. Yeah. Yeah, but, I, but but the crystals, the crystals, the crystals, the crystals dude. The, you read my. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was like, I'm what are we doing? The cri- do. who's gonna do the crystals take? I was like, what, what are you doing the- here? <laughs> what what kind of crystal works for this? Do you think it's like a quartz, or do you think it's a a fucking? I don't know anything else about. I that think was my uh, only with, knowledge of crystals. nice improv. Which, whichever one fits up his ass better. <laughs> <laughs> there you guys whatever have it. Keister's going to the fight. Whatever he holds yeah, in got, his sphincter. I've got an eight inch crystal myself. So <laughs> How's that done for I you? Find that one. Has that worked for you in fights? It's comfortable. Yeah. So you guys go. It's put like a, a glove. S- put a stone in your asshole. You'll you know, you know what? Okay. One thing I'll give to Jared Cannonier, I think it's his mindset. I think he really does believe he's going to go out there and beat Izzy. And I feel like a guy that thinks that way with his power that he possesses, he could change the fight. Like that, I think that's a very powerful combination. So, well, do you see it getting past exciting. the third round? Yeah, I think so. I think you can get past the third round. There's a chance yeah. this fight might be really fucking boring too. I, I would like I to think say so as well. I'd like yeah. to say I think this is going to be a decision, uh, and it's actually going to be a close decision, and Izzy's going to take it. Here's what happens. Mm-hmm. I think because of the whole, I mean, we've seen Jared. He, he's a heavy guy. He's a big boy. I think what he does, he makes us dirty. I, like John was saying, he has very simple, yeah, path, uh, classic uh, combinations with his Muay Thai, right? Very classic. One, two, three, nothing crazy, no crazy angles. I think he really is going to just take Izzy, try to do the, the on game plan, probably put pressure against the cage, try to take him down. I think he's going to try smart. to scrap it out. He's probably going to yeah. scrap it out. Izzy will have trouble, but I think he's ready for you it. You think Jared is going to try to take Izzy down? Oh, yeah. I think put a so. body on him? Put him against the cage. Put that big, delicious black stone body on him. Black, black stone, stone body, huh? Yeah, they'd be black stone. That's black my new name. Stone. Stone. That's my new you're name. You're not gonna get. Show. You're not gonna get more black listeners on Tiger Belly if you talk about fine you black, say quartz. Like black, stone. You're not black quartz. Black quartz. Yeah, dude. You're not. I say black quartz. Yeah. Black quartz. Black quartz. Uh, all right, guys. Okay. We have a clean sweep for Israel Adesanya. Um, I don't know if Alex sent me his picks. Uh, he did not, but well, he'll get those. I think those he picks Izzy. You think so? All right, let's go to the uh, co-main event. This one, oh my gosh, a lot at stake here, honestly, for Max Holloway. And this hurts my heart. Volkanovski. It's a tough one to pick. Uh, A lot of implications if this happens. Um, Alexander Volkanovski versus Max Holloway, number three. Uh, Right now, uh, Alex has a two-zero lead on him. A lot of people were saying it was possibly a one-and-one, but it is what it is. Doesn't matter. He lost. It is what it was. It is what it was. It is what it is. So, John, we'll start with you first. Out of curiosity, did you have Volkanovski winning the fat the past two fights? No, I didn't. I did not, especially that second fight. I thought with the two drops, am I thinking of the right one? Was that the rematch? Yeah, where, yeah, uh, yeah. the second one, twice? rematch. I thought he did enough, man. I, yeah. I honestly thought he did enough. He beat the shit out of the leg. He dropped that guy twice. Uh, I'm a little biased. I, I love Max. Not mm-hmm. a huge fan of Volkanovski. I think Ooh. Max takes this one. Mm-hmm. I think he takes it. And I'm going to throw a wild one in there. I think he gets him by submission. Oh, I didn't even think of that. You know, Ooh, short, fat like neck that. and a headlock. I well, that's like because you're that. not a great MMA mind like myself. And you know what? I don't have a stone in my asshole. <laughs> yeah, you That's don't. how John that's has the, that's the problem, but not a mental capacity yeah. for it. Uh, Nick, uh, I know you're... Maybe not uh, the best brains for the art. No, it's, no, <laughs> not at all. Yeah, after jiu-jitsu, John's butt's always just bleeding. Just from like a, a stone cutting up his ass. <laughs> yeah, butt scooting with the stone. Uh, Nick, I know you. Pro- I know you're a big fan of Max Holloway, but opposite of John, I know you've grown to actually like Volkanovski. Kind of like I do like Volk, man. His personality's grown on you. So tell us what you fan. think. You're conflicted. You said I asked you earlier, but you were conflicted. Why? I am conflicted because I feel like I feel like Volk is in a stage in his career where he thinks. He really believes that he is the man. No one's going to fucking beat him. And he's kind of shown that. I think those past two fights where he fought Brian Ortega, he showed that he could be in really deep waters and pull himself out and be really hard to to beat. 
Because, dude, Brian Ortega, I think lesser guys in the division, you know, would have tapped to that. Can I, I, think, can I add something to that real yeah, quick, though? Go ahead. I got to disagree with you a little bit there. I, I let's, think, let's hear it. I, I got to tell you, man, I, I think Brian Ortega is – I don't, I don't want to say hype because that's kind say of how he wants to say, say it. He crosses say legs it. the no, other no, way. Say it, bro. Say it. You, no, no, I, I say which how way, you dude. feel. I went the other way. I just think he's whack, man. I think he's overrated. <laughs> I think he got the shit kicked out of him by Max, and then he got the shit kicked out of him by Volk. And it's like, okay, great. We know you've got a chin on you. We know you're tough, but when are you really going to show something? Ooh. And this is coming. Out of Hot take. Oh. Hey, you know what though? Hot like, I could, I understand takes. exactly where you're coming from with that though, right? Because on paper, you could say Brian Ortega is kind of he's a one note fighter potentially, right? Is, His striking man. got better, right? Be beating a guy like Korean Zombie, thinking about how these guys have beat Korean Zombie in the past, does that do a lot for a stock? I don't know, right? Does yeah. does winning does beating Korean Zombie granting you a title shot to volk how does that look do i feel do i feel like yair has the upper hand in the matchup with brian ortega i think so I yeah got, i gotta say that with uh with holloway also is that that last fight that he had with um what's his name here with yair he he looked a little rusty man I, yeah. I think that not not being in there as often as he would like to be is really taking an effect on him uh it, it, it's not that he looked bad and maybe rusty is the wrong word but he just looked a step behind it, mm. it, it he it looked like he maybe just could have used those extra reps maybe mm. you know two fight a year type deal yeah for but sure and, I, I and love he was him out for like man. two He's, years I, for, I will... for my money he is the most exciting guy i mean there's a reason they put that guy on abc every time for real. He's on there. But, for real yeah you, you know that's going to be a barn burner every time I, I and I say. think I think Max can make the adjustments, man. I th- I think Volk is really good. I think he's really strong. He's really durable, and I think that's why it's been really hard for Max to be able to kind of deal with him a little bit and have some, along with the technical ability. Like obviously Volk and Holloway are on another level of that 145 division with their skill sets. They have the most well-rounded skill sets across the board. Um, but I do feel like Volk has the a little bit more of a durable. He's a little bit more durable. What's the pick? And he's Nick? a little bit stronger. Uh-oh. So I feel like it's Max Holloway, dude. I have to go with Max. I feel you like he to. can make yeah. the adjustments live. And it's, dude, it's it's blasphemy if I stand here and say Max Holloway is gonna lose. I, I, and it, that is blasphemy. He's, he's is one same. of my. He, dude, he's my favorite fighter. I can't. I, I love the guy, and I want to see him win all the time. If he loses, I'm gonna be fucking hurt, but I won't be surprised either. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of Volk, but I, you, you do have to admire the body of work. He's he, fucking he good, absolute, man. He's good. Absolute beating his last two fights. I but, mean, TKZ yeah. had nothing for him. But wait, yeah. that, that being said, I was actually like thought this was a little close, and I was like, I'm a little nervous for for Max. But man, John re- kind of resuaded to reevaluate yeah. Brian Ortega. So yeah. like now I look at Volk, like the last two, I would say like really competitive wins would be against Max Holloway, right? And even those yeah. two fights. Think about even all like the online talk about like you're not really, really champ, close. you lost. So that's that could play with him. And then the next two fights he wins. I mean, now that John even kind of opened my eyes, I was looking at Brian Ortega's record. I'm like, oh, yeah, of course he beat Brian Ortega. And then he beat TKZ, of course. Yeah. Like TK, and he not... was massive favorites going in to those. Exactly. Fights. Yeah. So now I'm thinking like, ooh, maybe even the mind game still, people are probably still DMing him, sending comments. Yeah. You know, you really didn't beat Max. He's gonna fuck like yeah. that. Could be playing with him. So fuck it, Max all day, baby. Let's go. I am oh, worried sorry. about can, that. Yeah, can, we, can we put a pin in this real quick? You think Alexander Volkanovski is opening up his DMs that people are telling him he's not shit? Yeah. What are you talking yeah. about? No, no, hundred <laughs> percent. Here's the thing, because here's why. Because I know who he follows. He follows a lot of chefs to cook kangaroo meat. So when you're you're oh. going through all your chefs, you see little DMs from little annoying people. And you were like, I want to see what they're saying. Fuck I want to see what they're saying, mm-hmm. you know? So uh, the mind games. Uh, mind. All right, guys, let's move over to the next one. Uh, we got, yo, Sean Strickland versus oh, Alex Pereira. And we know why they put the Pereira fight on the main card. Yeah. You know what they're trying to set up. Yeah. So, uh, Nick, who you got? Go, go, go. Man, I got, uh, I, I, I'm going back and forth, but I think, 
I got Pereira, dog. I got Pereira. I want to see what he could do. I think if it stand if it stays standing up, I feel like Pereira has the skill set to be able to put down a guy like Sean Strickland. And Sean keeps it standing uh, up. <laughs> Always keeps it standing I, up. I, I think he might. If he gets in trouble, I think he's gonna shoot for double legs. But uh, I can't help but to feel like Pereira has the the higher firepower. Mm-hmm. To be able to change the fight, um, yeah. So I'm gonna go Pereira, and the odds are pretty even, dude. It's like there's no clear advantage here, so it's gonna be really interesting. Uh, Rico, yeah. what do you got, Muay Thai expert? Uh, I'm gonna piggyback on that, and I'm gonna go ahead and call first round knockout. And I would also like Woo! to just add that Sean Strickland looks like he's always dirty. That man needs a bath. That man needs some clean shorts. Okay, <laughs> and that's all I'm gonna say. I don't think he wrestles at all, actually. I think even if he does get in trouble, he he wants to come out and try to prove some shit. Yeah. Uh, I think he gets dropped. I think he gets dropped early. Ooh, Ooh. you know what? It's a fun fight, man. I'm I'm really that fight. fight I'm really fight. excited for. That's like it gets yeah. this whole fight card is stacked. By the way, like I'm amped. And you know how stacked yeah, it is. I can't wait for that Lauren Murphy fight. <laughs> It got, you know it got canceled. <laughs> it got canceled, dude. You're going to be bummed. I know. I'm You're fucking, fucking No, dude. John is very excited for the Lauren Murphy fight, guys. Put it, put that in the notes. Uh, Why is this stacked? Because guess what? The opening of the main card is fucking Pedro Munoz and Sean O'Malley. Uh, this is a, If Sean O'Malley gets this done, this is a very, very big win for him, not only for like... Hey, guess fight. what? Look at me. What? He what? gets it done. Sean O'Malley yeah. gets it done. Bro, the guy can dribble. Let's just put that the out. Guys, bro, you know, he's not the most likable guy sometimes, but I'm a fan. I think his the things he's doing in Octagon, unfortunately, doesn't get enough respect because he he's pretty slick. He's he's on a he's, he's on a new wave. Like he he's really fucking good, yeah. man. He can switch hit out of every position. His awareness is really good. Some might say, think, you know, his career trajectory is like a young Connor, I think. Yeah. I was gonna. I was actually going to say that if I could piggyback off your point, you I think off a, me, dude. A, a big thing <laughs> with him, man, is yeah. I would love to piggyback you. <laughs> Maybe later we can have an elephant walk. Uh, <laughs> I, I think what he's doing outside the ring is great for the sport, man. I think yeah. he's really going to do a lot for fighter pay. I'm not uh, like the biggest fan of the guy, but a, a, a lot of these. That's that's for the same reason a lot of people don't like him because they feel he talks too much shit. But yeah, the guy's putting himself out there, man. For real? The guy's getting himself on balls. his cards, getting the eyes on him. Yeah, man. It takes balls to make that kind of money outside the sport and have you decide what fights you're going to take and when you're going to yep. take them. Yeah, he's that I, big I think of a draw, man. He is. He's a huge draw. Uh, I think he gets it done against Munoz too. Yeah. I also think he gets it done. And when he wins this, I think he has all the leverage finally because he gets a top yeah. 10 guy out. And then Dana White can't really deny him the yeah. money. It's also yeah. on this yeah. card. Yeah. Are you kidding yeah. me? Everyone's watching this shit. Oh, man. Uh, guys, and I, I, would, I would also like to add that Cheeto definitely fucked him up with those elbows. He wants to go ahead and complain about how his ankle broke and shit, but he was getting touched up. I love Cheeto. Cheeto yeah. And I can't wait for him to get to beat the shit out of Dom. Ooh, and honestly, che- Cheeto and, and Sugar Sean down the line, please, is is gonna be the fucking barn burner. Please, I yeah. think they're doing the right thing by prolonging it and and making them come back to it because I think it's gonna be a really fucking good fight. Man. Yeah, but they're also pull the- Saki, they're gonna circle back. <laughs> <laughs> that was a deep one. Sorry, <laughs> that's for that's for all the the political heads out there. Uh, I think Jen Saki our- is pretty fine actually. So how about that, dude? All right, there's also uh, Rob. Wait, is that a prelim? Or no, is that main? No, card? dude, Rob it got Waller. bumped up because fucking Lauren Murphy and Michelle oh, Tate. Yeah, John's favorite forgot, fight. John's, yeah, John's pissed about it. Well, so let's who see doesn't out. want to watch a couple of 500 fighters just duke it out, man? <laughs> hey, one of, them, one of them becomes under 500. That's a big deal. That's a fucking yeah, big man, deal, I mean, dude. We, we, we were all clamoring for that Michelle Tate comeback, you know? <laughs> uh, Robbie Lawler, Brian Barbonera. <laughs> How do you guys feel about Robbie Lawler coming back? Do you think he's going to be a uh, good, fresh legs, or is he old, John? I think. I think. I, oh, go ahead. Go, ahead, please. Go ahead. No, no, no. He said he's going to piggyback off you. I, I want to see John say it, so he doesn't piggyback off you. Go, John. I'm actually yeah, go just really excited for this fight, man. Brian Barberina is a fucking 
he's I, I want to say savage, but that dude, he you just is. can't put that guy away, man. You got to hit that motherfucker with a brick. And I, I don't think Robbie's past is prime either. I think the time off will do that guy some good. Mm, okay. I'm, I'm actually I'm excited for this one, man. I think this one's going to go the entire way, and I think it's going to be another classic fight for Robbie. I love it, dude. Brian Barbarena always puts on shows, and who? I mean, He's other sick. than. Oh, other than Colby Covington, who's the last guy you can think that really threw a fucking beating on Robbie Lawler? Yeah, that's true. Not Nick Diaz. Oh, this guy's no, a lot I of thought it was nice. going to happen that, that way. But Oop. I think I got Brian Barberina. I Ooh. think he... Is this the you know, retirement fight for Robbie? Is that what you're saying? I don't know. I don't think so. Uh, I just feel like... He's just a fresher guy, I think. Like he's just had more 40? experience over time. But then again, it's like this: these fights are a toss-up. You really don't know how the fuck yeah. this is gonna go. If you're gonna tell me, if you're gonna sit here and tell me it's gonna go this way, uh, it's these are one of the fights in MMA that, like, if you're betting, I'd probably stay away from. Hmm. I think I'm gonna go Robbie Lawler with this one, actually. Yeah, I see. I think, the, I think him coming off of time is really good for him. Can I jump? I, I don't mean to jump ahead or give spoilers but am i crazy or did cowboy get added to this card he got added he got He's fighting miller again right yep yep yep, yep. and uh, that's on the prelim i i thought it said on the main card but i think it's on the prelims officially oh, we just got new yeah. news that also, it actually got uh, canceled and lauren murphy's back in good job john <laughs> he's fighting jim miller jim miller lauren murphy jim miller <laughs> I, I would like to see cowboy just call it a day man uh he yeah I don't want to see that anymore. I have no interest in seeing him fight anymore, and it's not because I don't love him. It's just like you it's enough. over, man. You it's over, buddy. Go get yeah. your paycheck this, some other way. How, he, he's been going. I mean, this is the this is the third card that they've thrown him on now. Mm-hmm. I, I yeah. kind of get the sense that he's going to be kind of a Tony Ferguson, you know, making weight before the uh, was it Gaethje? Before Gaethje mm, yeah. the fucking dog piss out of him. Oh man, I was thinking the same yeah. thing. Are you my fucking head, dude? Um, I yeah, am worried I about that too. He's piggybacking, bro. <laughs> yeah, but also too, uh, Jim Miller, he's he's looking in rhythm. You know, he's had I mean? a resurgence, man. He mm-hmm. looks yeah. fucking good, and he's beating good young guys, man. So, he is. Uh, I, Speaking I feel of like, it, like it's a tough a fight, of young guys. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's our. Yeah, okay, cool. Hey, cool, dude. Hey, <laughs> hey dude, cool. Uh, to it. Shut up, dude. Uh, all right. So that was the main card. We were always talking about Cerrone and Jim Miller. Um, dude, everything is stacked. So I believe it to you both. And I'll do my third one. Uh, what is the most? Uh, what's the fight are you most excited about in the prelims? Oh my uh, God, Nick, you so go for many. it. So many, but pick hey, the one that you're like. My boy, this one I love. My boy, Jalen Turner. You love I'm, him, man. I'm, I love I love watching him fight. He's a fucking spectacular fighter. Um, he's only getting better. I, I think he's going to do really well against Brad Riddell. I think it's going to be a tough fight for him, but I feel like he could he, – he, his confidence is on another level, and I think he's going to show it. You think he fight. beats Brad after Brad coming off that sick fight with Fiziev? Uh I don't know, man. I, I think so. I'm, I'm, I'm always root for Jalen, bro. I'm always, I'm always in for Jalen. So that's, that's who I'm picking. Damn it, he's young too, 27. Uh, John, what Come fight on. do you like? Uh, do you know? Do you know the fights on the prelims? You want me to read them to you? Or are you no, good? I was just gonna say I I, uh, I didn't do my homework. I don't even You're know who's on the prelims. All right, we got Ian Brad. Gary. We got yeah, Ian Gary, Gabe Green, Uriah Hall, Andre Munoz, Jessica I, your favorite versus Macy Barber, Brad Tavares, fight, though. the guy That's from South fight. Africa, Driscus Duplessis, he's good too. Versus Jessica Tavares. Rose Clark. Um, oh, you know my what? girl, I'll, Jessica Rose Clark is fighting. Yeah, she's opening up the whole card. Ozzy, 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 oi, oi, oi. Yeah. Hey, let's go ahead and get her a real fight, huh? <laughs> she's fighting Ju Julia Storlarenko. Yeah, okay? yeah, great, great. She's yeah. nine and seven. So. Oh, wait, this just in? Laura Murphy back in fighting Jessica Rose Clark. <laughs> John well, Goddard. I think actually, I think actually the, the sleeper one from the ones you just mentioned to me, I think Macy Barber and Jessica Guy could be a damn good fight. That's so a banger, dude. That's a matchup for a banger, dude. Yep. Yeah. And also, Araya Hall, Andre Muniz. That's a good one. Yeah. That's a, yeah. Dude, that's a fucking sick fight. Andre Muniz is the dark horse at middleweight as well. And it's he weird. is another dark horse. It is where they put Uriah yeah. Hall not on the ABC prelims, though. Or is he? Oh, yeah. No, no, he's on the main prelims. He is? Okay. Uh, I'm going to go with Ian Gary. I like this guy a lot. I know people don't, but um, he's fun. 
He's fun to watch, and uh, I like. Are you talking about Ian Gary? You're talking about you. Uh, yeah, uh, myself. Oh. Uh, but also Ian Gary. <laughs> Ian Gary. Ian Gary. Ian Gary. Uh, guys, those are our picks. Uh, remember, all our picks are correct. So make sure you spend money on that and your entire life savings and your crypto on our picks. They're dope. I'd like to thank John <laughs> Rico. Round of applause. John Rico. For being on here, for bringing down on. the facts, bringing down the uh, the gemstone Great humor. Great analysis. Uh, in one of the most colorful rooms I've ever seen in my life. Thank you. Um, I love you both very much. We appreciate you, John uh, and Nick. Uh, also, you. Alex. Thank you for calling in, Alex from uh, from Vegas. Uh, make sure you follow us. At we out here MMA. John, uh, if you want, do you want people to follow you, or are you try? Are you a private guy? I'm a private guy. Can't follow him, guys. Just follow Nick. Just follow Nick on behalf <laughs> of John. You know. Yeah. And then you and follow then Nick. Send me a Nick message there. saying I love John. And then that you also hate Nick. So we know we can tally it up. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, we love you. Thanks, John. <laughs> Nick, peace, guys.